Welcome everyone to the 325th oh. weekly MLP Drawing School Live Critique Stream. It's somehow May 24th, and the world hasn't exploded. Woohoo! We live another Whoa. day! <laughs> Thanks, Celestia, I guess. <laughs> uh, we got a small horde of folks here, so starting off at the top of the list, we got an Alley Claw. Hello! We got a Pixin' Up. Uh, there's a CPC hiding in the background. We got a Vex. Oh. And potentially a Zai hiding in the background. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you have any art you'd like to submit, uh, well, we're out of space, so you might have to grab us earlier next time. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, the first submission we're going to do was submitted by on our subreddit by Supermarine Spitfire. It is the bottom right-hand corner for all of you watching. Or joining us for the critique. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Uh, and they are asking... Uh, the main question is figuring out how to make a decent-looking digitally painted background. videos posting a while ago about backgrounds i think uh shiko was doing some of them so if you want to like go i think it's in one of the forts if you want to back it up a little bit there's some good background tutorials yeah the nice thing about backgrounds is that they're not so they're the big scary thing right you see a lot of memes about it you see like people like oh god i'll do anything but draw a background the thing is, backgrounds are just another character. It's just like drawing another character. You just yeah, have... this is a lot to do to get that character moving. <laughs> mm. <laughs> they're they're just little bits and pieces. Like the tree itself, that's a character. Like the the I'm, way I'm, I'm feel doing a, a sort character. of lo-fi beat themed background in one of my pictures, and it is um, it was not a good idea. <laughs> There's a lot of detail. <laughs> So I think I think my recommendation and my advice would be um you can you can like you're using pretty big brushes and all that and pretty big shapes for the character. You can probably use like the same kind of like big shapes and all that sort of stuff for most of the background as well. Like if I I'm, I'm just I have a pretty big brush and I'm just sort of brushing over these areas to try to get them to fit in a little bit more with the with the character and not sort of because if if the character is you know drawn with these fairly big shapes and these you know fairly big sort of lines and then this um background area is all like very defined very contrasting like painterly strokes and all that sort of stuff your attention is going to go to the background instead of to the character so Yeah, it doesn't need to be a big change, but just like something to kind of make them fit in a little bit more together, I think would help. Yeah. It's it's always going to be a challenge of um, where does the focus live? You know, is it on the character or is it sort of on the background or... You know how do you how do you split attention in a composition and all that sort of stuff? But I think I think you're going well. Just don't don't be afraid of using big brushes and sort of leaving it a little bit less defined and exact. Also, the framing of your character is, is mate is probably not making it easy for your background. If you're to do as CPC has been doing here and you know, give you more access to the background so it's less of a character with a background behind it and more of a picture, like a story going on, it might be a bit easier on you. Anyone else have any other pieces of advice for this one? 
Um, not at the moment, but I'll I'll go through. I know there's a bunch of links to background tutorials. I'll try to ping you. It's Super Marine Spitfire, right? Yeah. For this picture, okay. I'll I'll try to ping you in Discord because uh, I know when we had the other bot, we had a whole slew of background stuff, and I'm not sure if they're in the tutorial section yet. If I haven't moved them, but anyway, suffice to say, I'll I'll ping if you're watching. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our next picture then. There it is. We're going to do top left-hand corner. Sounds good? This one is by... Oh, I'll find it. Uh, Puzzlehead underscore add 1455. Uh, another unfinished doodle. have no questions we love unfinished doodles heck yeah thank you for submitting this this is the one we're doing yeah yeah right. uh and i just realized that they've actually pulled or we have two of their pictures on i wasn't paying attention to the names apparently Oops. Uh, but we'll do this one anyway just because it's got more of the character than the other one so first thing I'd recommend doing is try flipping your canvas, because I think a lot of the problems I'm seeing become quite noticeable when I flip it the other way. Mm. Uh, mostly to do with the face shape that you have going on here. So a lot of it is over here for some reason. When uh, If you're looking at a circle, it should be more or less contained to that circle. So. You're thinking about where the chin would come off here. Be closer to over here, somewhere off here. The ears coming out of the top, like real horses will have the ears coming out of the top instead of like more on the side. It's completely style dependent, but it, it just looks a little, little bit more visually pleasing if it's kept within that base sketch circle. Uh, then, you know, try to put in hair first and then build a body around that. Mm. This point right here is a very um, important one because this this basically tells the viewer where the neck is facing. You know, if if it's like going over here, that's um, an indication that like it's tilting this way, and you know, all all that kind of sort of stuff. And one of the important things to keep in mind is this sort of shape. I don't know the exact name for it, but like that's kind of like the, the these like muscles here or ligaments or whatever kind of going in there. So this will kind of point roughly towards that like shape where that neck is going. And you'll have like a similar one on the other side that kind of does the same job. And making sure that all of that this, this, and this all kind of like make a that sort of a shape. If it was a uh, just helps. Oh, sorry. If okay, it's all good. Ma making sure that all of these kind of um, make the same kind of shape will just reinforce that. Um, basically, just the shape that you're going for. I really love what you've done with the mane. It's such a fun looking mane. Mm -hmm. Trying to, like, you've basically done it with three colors, well, two colors and the slightly darker outlining, but it works well for this, especially with your style, where you do these colored lines and don't do really thick but very clean lines. It's good. Works very well with that. Complements it, I should say. I don't know how accurate it is to real horses, but I'd add just like a tiny little bit of like a something back there, like this sort of shape, like just to help tie the ears into the head a tiny little bit more. But that's uh, just me. Now that you're talking about ears, uh, it does appear that this far ear, okay, bigger brush time, this ear is uh, a bit higher than the other ear. Uh, both of them appear to be alert, uh, pointing upwards, and with the head tilt, we would just have a that ear a bit lower attached to the side of the skull there. 
Mm-hmm. All right, shall we move on to the next one? I guess some good uh, drawing going on here, just refining kind of the shape of the muzzle and all that sort of stuff. Keep this in mind. And uh, yeah, it just it's good to look at references of um, horses and cats and dogs when you're looking at like muzzle and face shape kind of sort of stuff. References are good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's roll on. Uh, next one is this one right beside it. It is caught by. Is that uh, Ducky Evil Quack? What a great username! Decided to challenge myself with trying to get it as cubed as possible. Heck yeah, I like yeah. it as cubed as possible. So, not quite just a solid block because I mean, you could have just done a single cube with eyeballs and that would have been as cubed as possible. <laughs> Wait, didn't someone sell pillows like that where it's just a cube pony? Yeah, I remember seeing that back in the day. Yeah. But as far as getting like the cubed feeling going and the the low poly sort of looking, yeah, this is definitely getting low poly. I would say, though, um, as someone's demonstrating already, um, if you do truly want it to be a bit more cubed, I would think about doing harder edges. Um, since cubes, right, we know them as hard, solid things. Uh, but with your pony here, it feels a little, it feels much softer. I kind of got more of a pinata vibe myself. So if it's, if you're really trying to get that really cubed look, I, I'd even think about using a ruler tool or something to really draw those hard edge shapes so you don't get any kind of curves in the legs going. Or even have just, as long as you have points, more pointy points, that also can help sell a more cubed feel more square i like the robot i'm imagining it looking here. like one, i'm imagining it looks like one of those like sort of toy, little toys just made out of blocks you can sort of transform it and shift the blocks around <laughs> yeah i really wish uh you were here to answer some of these questions because I would like to know what degree of cubification you were truly going for. Mm -hmm. I guess that that's one thing we can say about critique. Um, if you do want to post on our subreddit, we really encourage questions. If if there's something you need help with, or you wanted to do different or better at, or something you thought you did great, you can even mention that too. Um, mm -hmm. But it, it helps us help you a little bit better. Please, please ask questions. Especially if you're posting for critique, it's nice to have a, a conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. When, um, oh. when I'm, I just wanted to quickly mention when I'm when I'm drawing wings, um, a good thing to keep in mind is that there's like almost like a shoulder kind of connection up here that like flows down into the wings. So I like having like a little bit of like a bit of a shape, and then having that kind of all just flow into each other. But yeah. All right, let's move on to our next one. Uh, we aren't going to do this really cool blue one with the rainbow because it's actually the same artist as the one on the left. Uh, cool art style, though. I'm really interested uh, to see how that finishes. So let's do this. Very cool. Yeah, let's do the one that's being circled. Heck yeah. Uh, it is by. Uh, Kill Lizzie, and this is Lona Love Bites, my most recent OC. Please give your opinions and critiques. I'm going to do this. I'm just a regular background. Sorry, Fluff? I'm not sure if this is just like a regular fat pony or if this is like a succubus type character. It was interesting. Cute. Hmm. What, I, what I've done up here 
is just um, sort of put the hair in front of that uh, back here, just because it helps keep the uh, head shape more defined and all that sort of stuff. This this is just me, but whenever I'm thinking about like this um, whole shape through here, the the thing that I'm thinking of, I'll just choose like a slightly different color just to make it like easier to see, I guess. Um, I put a lot of like mass, a lot of weight in this like front section and have like this line sort of go up into the uh, sort of thigh kind of area here. So whenever I'm drawing, I'll tend to be like down a little bit lower and then up a bit. No, that's just me. So you've you've created a very elongated, very thin character, uh, a style that I've seen by quite a few. Um, like a, can't name too many names off the top of my head because I'm horrible with names. Can't remember my own some days, but um, it's used by quite a few artists. Um, the elongating, stretched one. the The thing you'll also find with them is they tend to elongate the face too. Uh, just to try and continue that feeling that goes with it. So longer muzzles, you know, um, longer features on it, on the face, um, or smaller heads, which is cute and adorable sometimes. Uh, but just trying to keep uh, a cohesive feeling between uh, your decision uh, or your sizing decision really helps out the overall uh, delivery of the picture. If um if you're after an example of these like long sort of poses, looking at um an artist called Len, <laughs> I think they go by Lens or he goes by Len Sketchbook, and their comic The Opposite Six um has a lot of examples of these sorts of elongated characters. That's pretty cool. Can recommend. Thank you. I think I'd also recommend, um, don't be afraid to break your character down into basic shapes like I've done up here in the corner. Uh, that'll really help, like, define where the body is and how proportional it is to each other. Uh, you have, like, the body is super long, but the neck isn't all of that long, compared, like, compared to the body there. It, it's just... You can fix a lot of proportional issues if you just make those shapes first so you can get down what's in your head and then tweak anything you need to before adding all of the details you need to move after doing that. Heck yeah. All right, and any other comments on this lovely picture? I like it. Looks good. Feel free to uh, yeah. toss us more pictures and give us uh, questions and all that sort of stuff. Because if we know that what you, if, if we know what you're looking for, and what you uh, really like about this, and what you kind of think might need improvement, then we can sort of help you out a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. Our next picture is this lilac story. <gasps> And it's Perfect. by Lilac Story Pone. Requesting a critique for my Sona Lilac Story. They're cute. I like the color choices. <laughs> mm. Very cute. What's what's this purpley color called? Lilac. Ah, uh, uh, I, I see. I see. The, the name makes sense. I was like, oh, I want to look at the canvas and look at this picture so I can draw in the critique. And then I, I was like, all of these switch. Which switch to the app? Wait, no, it's it's not that app. It's this app. Wait, is it a different tab? Is it this tab? Wait, no, it's it's. Oh, it's on this. I was on the tab. I was just in the corner drawing spike. So I'm 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 here now. I found my way. <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. Yeah, I I I see what someone's messing with the the colors here. I like the idea that you've got like the sort of the the idea of doing a character where you've just like drawn the outline and just splurge the color on underneath can work stylistically very well. But you do have to be very careful with it because there are some tangents happening. Like the fact that there's this little strand of hair coming out here says to me that um, 
it, 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 it's almost like you can see that the heads are connecting, but we've already got the neck here, so that's confusing. I think the legs also start to create because you've got this this shape here, almost looks like another pony leg. So it has that. Has anyone seen, seen the optical illusion with the elephant, and it's got like too many legs because at the bottom they like don't they don't line up with where they are at the top. It looks like the elephant's got like eight legs. It kind of gives me that feel a little bit. Mm. Um, like, yeah, so like I'd, I would be careful with with how this this coloring style like is represented. And just try to sort of break it up somewhat. The the idea is interesting. What I tend to um how I tend to see this um sort of thing done is by having you you'll see artists sometimes have like these. Uh, abstract sort of shapes in the background mm -hmm. to kind of help, like, you know, triangles, squares, you know, stuff like that to try to, like, uh, make interesting sorts of things happen on the page. So Yeah, it just helps to define where the character is. You can even have some parts of the character have, like, a little white out on them and just sort of help illustrate that a bit more. Like, oh, it's, like, abstract and like I threw the colour behind it but then also look it's deliberate as well. And just like some parts maybe even sort of push the back leg by the back leg. Mm -hmm. here as well. And That's this may be this might be very presumptuous of me, but to me this reads more as somebody who's maybe not used to digital art so much. Um I don't think this was so much a choice but not really um... knowing the ways to colour things in yet, which is perfectly fine. We all start somewhere with learning the programs and there's so many options it can get overwhelming but the points that people are bringing up still very much stand um that mm -hmm. having having these gaps having not having everything colored in so we can understand things especially with the leg um issue but um all i'll say for that is look up tutorials for your program there's so many out there anymore we're really blessed in this age of the internet where there's information for just about anything you need to learn to do so don't be mm. afraid to maybe watch some stuff and just uh some very beginner tutorials with whatever program you're using and um and if at the end of the day you don't really care have fun, have fun with it keep drawing I, you've got this great cute oc and i can't wait to see what more art you do with them and how you gradually learn and get comfortable with digital art yourself yep have fun. Mm -hmm. uh, the OC looks good. The 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 colors, the um, brown hair and the lilac, they look good together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really cute. Uh, There's some anatomy stuff, but um, without you here and without you asking questions, I don't don't know what to quite uh, tell you yet. We could have obviously go through different anatomy, but. The thing I basically want to say is um, check out check out the subreddit sidebar or come into the Discord and there's a whole tutorial center just if you want to see some more, not necessarily correct anatomy, but either something closer to something that follows the rules of show style or IRL animals or whatever in between, just kind of getting familiar with proportions. And honestly, your proportions seem very nice to me. Like the way you have the body to head mm. shape, like that is coming along so nicely. It, it reads really well. I think the details might be giving you a little struggle, like with the positioning of the horn and the ears. So that could be something for you to look into next time. But overall, you're doing really great work. I'd love to know questions from you, what, what you mm. feel like you're struggling with or what you think you're doing good at. Mm. Heck yeah. All right. Any more comments or critique on this one? If we like it. Feel free to toss us more pictures in the future. Yeah. All right. We're rolling on to our next lovely horse. So many horses. Uh, let's do this cotton or this adorable cupcake one. It is by mm -hmm. Splatter. Remade an old OC. This is bread pudding. Nice. Brilliant. I love them. Uh, the something hair. that I said when I like first saw this one. I love how like uh, you see this kind of like just gradient stuff a fair bit, but like you haven't done just like, you know, vertical gradient. It's actually like, you know, this area is more red than this area. So it's actually like, you know, it really helps reinforce the form. 
and it looks mm -hmm. really good. It's so pretty and so cute, and I love the curls and how like voluminous it is, and just mm -hmm. it's cute. I love them. Do they have any questions for us? Nope. Oh, questions, please, please. Um, we love people submitting, but please also submit questions. We have a little mod bot that's like, hey, oh, uh, put some questions because we we don't know how to help when we see something so pretty. We don't want to suddenly mm. tell you to do super hyper realism if you have no interest in it, you know. Yeah. I to add to that, uh, critiques a conversation. If you go check the top of our subreddit, you'll find a pinned video that's been there for, I think, three years. Uh, and it's all about giving and getting critique. Critique, how the heck does it work? Go watch it. Seriously, it is well worth your time. It's what, mm -hmm. 20 Phenomenal minutes? video. Mm -hmm. So, okay. what I, so, a couple of tiny little itty bitty things, which probably aren't important, but all good. Um, these hooves, the the cool thing is that um, you can make them a little bit more pointed at the front, and that will like help sort of show the direction the hooves are facing in, kind of sort of stuff. Like for this one, if this one's like pointing more toward more in, you have that like almost point of the hoof coming out this sort of way, and it helps uh, kind of helps us understand the direction that the hooves are pointing in. Um, in addition, another small thing. If, if you we're looking for, for this painting from the top, um, here's how I'm kind of imagining they're like looking this way. Their body is like, you know, all crunched and on this side and on this side it's like big, really wide. Like shoulder here, shoulder here, hip here, hip here kind of sort of thing. So if I'm thinking about it in that kind of a way, this hoof would be kind of the shoulder for it would be like almost over here sort of thing. So I'd kind of expect that to come out a bit more. Maybe even to see like a little bit of like blank space between here. But that's just me. Positioning things is hard, so. If this doesn't uh, actually make sense for the pose you're going for, feel free to disregard it. Oh, and another tiny itty bitty little thing. Uh, I think that like with how long the ears are, you could show the other ear like just in the corner, like right here. And I think that would add a little bit to it. But that's just me. Doesn't need to be big at all. But just something to be like, hey, there's a there's an ear. Let's go. A little bit of extra visual interest kind of sort of stuff. But again, this like whole everything. The two different colored eyelids, the bow, the all of these, the different line weights, it all looks great. Something so that's why might... you can only nip nitpick. Yeah, something I might just tweak a little bit is this connection point here. Um, you just got to remember that uh, it's going to kind of squish together at this point. There isn't going to be like an overlap this way or else the leg's going to be really swinging to the side, especially since we can see the back of the hook so nicely here. It's going to be more like a squish together joint instead of a straight down joint. So if we mm. think of it more like a bend... I mean, in fact, I might even pull the hawk here up a little bit more and have it be more of a bend situation. I know mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense drawing over from here, but <laughs> if we think of the butt and the back leg going down and then back up again, we'll get the squish there and then the hook coming down. We'll see the big old stompers, which are really super cute. Mm -hmm. I tried. Yeah. I tried to illustrate next to it, um, a little clearer. But yeah, it might just be a preference thing. I know you can be a little loose if you're a little more cartoony and uh, bigger about your strokes, but it's still good to, to think about the anatomy that we don't see. Keeps the things a little more cohesive. Nah, I think that makes sense. I like it. I, I even just like removing that line 
helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Because this, when whenever I'm thinking about like these kind of like weird overlap situations, my mind is always on what is in front, what is the the camera going to see, and what's going to be hidden. And you know, this hock area here is going to be in front of the butt, and so it doesn't make sense for the butt to kind of come in front of the hock area there. Mm -hmm. Oh, cute. Yep, we like it. The best best drawing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, shall we move on to our next lovely picture? Thank Let's you. go. All right. Uh, let's do the one war horse. <laughs> Buggo. This is thing. by... Yeah, this is by Zeta Nepazilot. What a mouthful of a name. Wow. <laughs> uh, going for a trip with their death robot. Uh, context, Emperor, Emperor Big Pipe, no, Big Pip, with harmonious precision, has reversed engineered some genetic research from a long time a long gone human civilization using this technology they created five of these mecha uh, mecha thrombos mecha thrombos are 12.5 oh, no. times bigger than ponies or humans it's a okay okay so it's a mecha version of an animal from the game rim world which is like this big fluffy thing with a horn uh, that makes more sense that's a yeah. pole that's, a, that's quite a, an <laughs> OC <laughs> A lot going on in that description. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that well, just just like looking at the design of the mecha and and like in particular the red eyes for some reason it was just giving me like new grounds flash animation flashbacks. No pun intended. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I I can get that vibe. I like it. And I like it. the gun is really cool the way you've got because it's it's all broken down to basic shapes the mecha which I quite like. But the mm. the way that you put those shapes together like tells us what we're looking at quite well. Especially with the gun. So something something that might be interesting to um to experiment with a little bit is uh trying and thinking about like basic three D shapes and perspective. Uh like if you if you look at like, you know, two point perspective and you like make shapes off of that and cubes and all that kind of sort of stuff. And if you have like three point perspective you can get like, you know, different sorts of like really weird looking buildings and all that kind of sort of stuff, really weird looking cubes and that, those kinds of things. But getting an idea of this will help when you want to draw like, um, these sorts of shapes in different perspectives. So like the, the fact that all of the um, guns are like directly side on, it, it feels a little bit, a little bit weird. Like I'd expect at least one of these to be like, you know, a little bit maybe pointed like t a tiny mm. bit towards the camera or a tiny bit like away from the camera or something like that. Color and then just, just to break it up a little bit. So. Oh, I can't. I can't draw. Uh, okay. See, like a little little circle, and then suddenly the gun is is pointed a bit more forward, and we get like maybe a a green, like a lens, and put that there. Oh, look at that! Let me just make that one overlap a little bit. Mm -hmm. Whoa! It's three D suddenly. <laughs> it's looking towards us. It's, it's looking third quarter. Shapes. Yeah. Uh. So I'm seeing this character with the Tavio um looking looking like he's just sliding right off this guy. And I think part of the reason <laughs> is he's not he's just sort of sitting on like it's a a sticker. Yeah. Um rather than Can you imagine the squeaky sound as he's slowly sliding. <laughs> he's like sliding down the arm. <laughs> yeah. So if we if we're to uh, change up his positioning a bit to make him look like he's uh, supporting himself on here, uh, or grabbing onto something to uh, further 
uh, like hold him there rather than being on a, a an angle away from the forward direction of this bot. Uh, we definitely help this pitcher out a bit. So if you're to uh, get him up on say uh, two hooves and then have one hoof t holding on to the gun, I bet that would be a very good, uh, a very strong position for him to be standing on, at least compared to the the slowly sliding body going on here. Here's a little pose you could do: is you have like one one leg going on, one leg going off of the. Uh, so it's going I'm trying to straight, going behind. Mm. And you have you have one leg sort of showing up on top. It's going like this. Um <laughs> yeah, that's so good. Too, too hard to see. But yeah. Um so if that if if one of those scribbles don't make any sense, there we go. <laughs> yeah. If you if you're looking to do um if you're looking to like mess around with poses and like just experiment and get kind of familiar with drawing different sorts of poses, um, I would my my thing fell. Uh, how dare it? Um, I would search for a site called Line of Action, yeah. and they have an animal tool. And what you can do is you can um, look for um, dogs, cats, yes. e equines, and uh, do some gesture sketching, which is basically where you have a short amount of time to kind of go through and try to get mm -hmm. the essence of a pose. And um, I found that that's really helped me in terms of getting like interesting looking fun poses and all that sort of stuff, getting more of like an eye for how things work in 3D. But cool job. You drew a thing. Whoa, you succeeded at art. <laughs> sure. Keep it up. Keep it up Great and uh, send us questions next time. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Love questions. Yeah. We're going to be obnoxious about asking everybody. <laughs> yeah. And while I'm at it, critique others. It's great for you. You'll love it. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Everybody just collectively watch the video uh, pinned to the top of our subreddit. Really take it in, ask questions, and critique others. And that video will explain it all to you. It's that simple. It's wonderful, in fact. <laughs> I, I, I remember that week when we, um, we had the recorded segment, and before any every single picture, we were like, please critique other people. Please do this. Like we're Please. commercial. Good. All right. Well, seeing as that's uh, the last of our pictures this week, we're going to call it a day. So thank you all for coming. We'll see you again next week. Woo. Bye. Bye. Bye.